everyone thank you for tuning in um, as we come around God's word again uh, we're going to do part three of this little series that we have entitled why we need the Holy Spirit um, we have been looking at the Holy Spirit as he has been symbolized if you like um, in week one of your remember he was symbolized by a dove when John was in the River Jordan and the heavens were open and the Spirit of God descended like a dove and lighted upon him and the Father spoke from heaven regarding Jesus Christ and he says this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased and then last week um, and you can have a wee look at these uh, on YouTube um, or Facebook, uh, we looked at the Holy Spirit symbolized by fire and uh, John the Baptist in, John, in Matthew 3 and 11, speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, he said, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire and uh, I would recommend that you go and you check those two messages out and now we're going to have a look at part three why we need the Holy Spirit and we're going to look as the symbol of, of the wind of God the wind of God let's read from verse one of chapter three and may the Lord add a blessing to this reading there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews the same came to Jesus by night that's important many people I believe especially uh, in the past year have been inquiring of God uh, especially at night when no one's about when no one's watching uh, secret disciples like Joseph of Arimathea it says that um, he was uh, a disciple of Jesus Christ but a secret disciple because for fear of the Jews and so there are people like that and in fact not too long ago um, I had a phone call from a lovely lady called Cheryl and she had been seeking God in secret reading her Bible praying every night and I had the privilege um, of leading her to the Lord Jesus Christ. There are many people out there at the minute, and they are seeking, they are seeking God. They don't know how, they don't know what to do, but they're on their knees and they're crying and they're praying. And I, I hope and pray that these messages will somehow find them. And if you know somebody, uh, church, listen to me. If you know anybody, they're not saved but you think they're possibly struggling with life or whatever, get these little messages to them and who knows what God would do. So this man, Nicodemus, he came to Jesus by night and this is what he said. He said unto him, Rabbi, or teacher, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. So obviously he has seen uh, miracles that Jesus has done, possibly at uh, the, the marriage of Cana Galilee where the first miracle of the changing of the water and the wine, perhaps he was a witness to that. But he comes to Jesus by night and he says, he says, thou art a teacher come from, for, from God, for no man, you must be of God. You must come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Furly, furly, I say unto thee, this is so important, except for no other reason. This is the only way. He says, except a man in fact he says furly furly or truly truly he's getting this it's like he's getting this point across to Nicodemus he says furly furly I say unto thee except a man be born 
again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. This troubled Nicodemus. How can you be born again? How can you, how can you be born the second time? He's going to ask this question. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born again? I listened to what Jesus said. Jesus answered, Thoroughly, thoroughly, or truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Then he says, marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. Watch this strange illustration that Jesus gives to Nicodemus. I think it's wonderful. Listen to what he says. The wind, the wind bloweth where it listeth. And thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh or whither it goeth. So is everyone, not some, not even the majority, but he says, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Powerful illustration. Why we need the Holy Spirit. I know to some people this is a great mystery. But let, let me start off with, with a little word of personal testimony. Uh, not too long ago, I would say... About nine or ten years ago, I think it is now, my daughter Stacy invited me to go to the hospital with her. She was pregnant. And she had found out that I had never went with my wife um, for any of her checkups in the hospital. Or when I did take her, I wasn't that bad. I actually used to go with her, but I sat outside. I was very squeamish and I wouldn't go in with her. So she used to go in and get all these checks herself. And uh, as many as know, what they now do is, you know, they get the lady and they put her up onto the bed and they put the jelly all over her belly. <laughs> jelly on the belly, as we call it in our house. And they get uh, this little machine and they start to scan her belly and to scan the, the inside to see what's, what's taking place. It's amazing what they can do. So I went up this day and... Uh, she says, right, you've never seen this, come with me. So I went up and she she was ca carrying her little son, Charlie, at the time. And uh, we went in. And, of course, the nurse does all these things. And I was blown away. I was I was taken aback. I mean, I was, I was, I was almost crying sitting at the bed uh, with joy and with, you know, I was sitting in awe of what? Was, was in front of my eyes and I came home and uh, I went in to do my daily reading and I got my Bible out and uh, by chance, if you believe that, I opened up at this very scripture. It's in Ecclesiastes 11 and verse 5. I couldn't believe that I was reading it. This is what it says. As thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit? Can I say this? The ways of God are past finding out. You know, I the more I think I know God and what He's doing, the less I seem to know. That's I know that sounds a wee bit uh, back to front, but it's a truth. The more I seem to think that I've understood God and the ways of God and what He's doing and how He does it, 
he does something else and completely blows my mind. So this scripture says, As thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit, watch this, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her who is with child. I near fell off my seat when I read that. Nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child. Even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. Why we need the Holy Spirit, the wind of God. As I've said in another message, take the Holy Spirit out of many churches today and 95%, someone says 99%, God always leaves himself a remnant. But 95% of the work would still go on. And very few would even notice that he was gone. Why is this, Pastor? Because take the Holy Spirit out of the church and you remove the power of that church. We should be operating in all of our churches, in the power of the Holy Spirit. When you start to operate, if you like, in your own power, then you're in trouble. Jesus says in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, just before his ascension, after he has been crucified and after the third day being raised from the dead, on the day of his ascension when he is going to be caught up and go back up into heaven again this is probably the last instruction that he gave to the church and listen to what he says he says but you shall receive power after not before after that the holy ghost is come upon you take the holy spirit out of the church and you automatically will lose the effective witness that comes through the power of the Holy Ghost. Watch, listen to what he goes on to say. He says, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses. You need the Holy Ghost to be an effective witness. Do you know that? And the more you have of the Holy Ghost, the more you're filled with the Holy Ghost, the greater witness that you're going to be. It's, I can't even explain it. But the more you talk about him, the more you want to talk about him. And I'm not talking about the Holy Ghost, I'm talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the Holy Spirit's uh, uh, chief end is to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ because Jesus said of the Holy Spirit, he shall not speak of himself, but he shall glorify me. So when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you want to talk about the Lord Jesus Christ. And the more you talk about him, the more you want to talk about him. And the less you talk about him, the less you want to talk about him. When you allow the Holy Spirit to do a work within you, my friend, you're going to be a witness on the Jesus Christ. He says, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and on to the uttermost parts of the earth. It's essential. The Holy Spirit is essential. And this is just another reason why we need so desperately the Holy Spirit in our lives. Notice in our reading in verse 7, Jesus said unto him, Marvel not that I said unto thee, You must be born again. And he said it twice, and he said it thoroughly, thoroughly, or truly, truly twice to him. He says, You must be born again. But I want you to Notice who it is he sent it to. This man, Nicodemus. Jesus 
tells this tremendous revelation to this Pharisee named Nicodemus. The Bible says he was a ruler of the Jews and he was a member of the Sanhedrin which was the religious assembly or council in the land of Israel at that time. Can I say this? And this is why Jesus, I believe, chose a man like Nicodemus, this religious leader, to, 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 to make this great revelation that a, that a man must be born again, that if a man is not born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. And he chooses this religious man. Why? Because brothers and sisters, religion did not and could not save them. And 2,000 years later, it still doesn't save today. In verse 5 he says, Except a man be born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to get born again. Everybody wants a little bit of religion. No matter what religion you follow, but religion gives people a false sense of security. And they think they're they're safe. They have this hope, but it's a false hope. Someone once said that they would rather have a man with no hope than a man with false hope. Because the man with false hope has stopped seeking. And at least with a man who feels that there is no hope, there is still something within him that knows that there's something missing. Is that you, my friend? You know, what age are you, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, time's almost out, your three score years and ten is up, and if by reason of strength God should give you another ten years, you know, or you've been to church many times, religiously you have went, you've maybe even served in the church, but you know, my friend, that you're not born again, that you're not saved. I had a young man on the phone with me yesterday asking me this very question. Asking me about people uh, in a certain church. And he says, Pastor, are these people who are religious and go to these churches born again? Well, my answer was simply this. God knows them who, who are his. God knows who are, who are saved, who are not saved. But can I say this? That person should know. And if they're asked that question, they should be able to ask in the affirmative, yes, I am. Affirmatively, yes, I am. I am born again. Are you born again, Pastor? 24th of June, 1987. I was born again of the Spirit of the living God. Jesus Christ, come into my heart and save me. Have you ever doubted your salvation? Never once. Never once. I was radically saved, radically born again. The new birth took place on the 24th of June, 1987. Boys are there, 34 years this coming June. He's a wonderful saviour. And who he saves, he keeps. And who he keeps, he satisfies. Hallelujah. Watch this. To every religious person who may hear this little message, and I'm preaching it with all the love in my heart to you. To every religious person, whether Baptist, Pentecostal, 
claiming to be Pentecostal, Presbyterian, Church of Ireland, Church of England, Church of Scotland, Church of Wales, Catholic Church, Orthodox, or Angli Anglicans, Jesus Christ says to you what he said to this religious man, Nicodemus, you must be born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. I said this in my first message. I listened to the statistics a couple of weeks ago when they said they have just passed the half million mark of people who have died in America of coronavirus. Over a half a million people. And the thought came to me, where are those people? They have went out into eternity. It's too late. There's no purgatory. There's no second chance. They have gone into eternity. Where will they spend eternity? Jesus says, except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's a solemn message, isn't it? But friend, you can be born again. And it's so simple. With all the sincerity of your heart, ask Jesus Christ to come into your life and to save you. And the scripture says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. That includes you, no matter who you are. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. In verse 4, Nicodemus asked the question. Let me just check my time. As usual, I'm running out of time. In verse 4, Nicodemus asks this question. He says, how can a man be born when he's old? He asks, can he go back into his mother's womb again and be born again a second time? Listen to Jesus' answer. He says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do you know what he was actually saying here? Watch this. That which is born of the spirit, or that which is born of the flesh is flesh. The new birth is as spiritually real as your child was born physically. You look at a little newborn baby who has just come out of the womb. They're, they're, it is amazing. And like that verse that I read earlier on, as they know it's not what is the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child. It's amazing. It's a miracle. But there is a greater miracle. That little child has to be born again. That child has been born of the, has been born of the flesh. But a day comes when he must be born again. A spiritual birth. In 1 Peter 1 and 23, listen to what Peter says. He says, being, here it is again, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth, forever and first yet Jesus uses a symbol this symbol of wind to describe what the Holy Spirit does he says it says uh, sorry Jesus uses the wind as a symbol of the Holy Ghost when a person is born again first yet let me let me read it to you yeah this, this is an amazing uh, illustration. And this is where really the heart of our message is. Jesus says in verse 8, The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. What a powerful illustration. Let me explain it to you as simply as I can. When a person is born again, we eventually, 
will see the effect of that new birth. When a woman gets pregnant, receives the seed of her husband and carries that child for nine months, we see that birth. We see how real this is, how, how real the child is. Well, listen, when a person is born again, we see the effect of the new birth. In other words, there will be a change. There will be a change. You will see the effect of the new birth. I could take you outside now and I can hear the wind blowing. I don't know if you can hear it behind me. I'm up here in my office at the top of the building and I can hear the wind blowing. If I was to take you over to the window over here and look out, over at the trees over at the far side of the field, I can assure you without going over there, I'm going to see the effect of the wind. Because those trees will be moving about. We can't see the wind, but we can see the effect of the wind. In 2 Corinthians Chapter 5 and verse 17 it says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. This is the new birth. The new birth or the second birth or being born again. We see the effect of it and we see a new creature, a new person. It goes on to say, all things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. The old life passes away. Now let me say this. I know there's many people and you struggle. You get saved. You ask Jesus into your heart. You receive the spirit of the living God. And immediately there, there is an effect. You know something has taken place. You know that you're born again. You know God has come into your life. But then the war begins. The flesh <laughs> battles against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. And the Bible says these are contrary one to the other. The old nature, the new nature, they fight against each other. But by the way, that is an evidence that you have been born again. Did you know that? You feel the, 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 the war, the, the, the battle going on within you. The new birth is so real. And as Jesus gives that illustration of the wind or the effect of the wind, he's talking about the effect of the new birth. There is a change in that person. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things pass away. Some of those old things takes longer than others. And can I say this, to especially young converts, you're a work in progress. And even to some older brothers and sisters who are still struggling with certain addictions. An addiction is an addiction. It is, the, the addiction has nothing to do with the new birth. No more than your good works have got to do with the new birth. The new birth is real. And you will begin to change. And you will change in many different ways. But there may be the odd thing in your life that you struggle with terribly. But can I tell you there's victory for the child of God who will cry on to God, who's willing to die to the flesh, and Almighty God will give you that lovely victory and set you gloriously free. The wind or the Spirit of God is essential for the new birth. And hear me, you cannot be born again without it. Point two. Point two, there is a sound. Let me look at the time. There is a sound. First it says, Jesus says, thou hearest the sound thereof. You hear the sound of the wind. There is a sound that comes from the Spirit of God. When a man receives the Spirit of God, 
Can I say this? They sound different. I'm going to use this as an illustration. I met a man many years ago and uh, I was introduced to him and lovely Christian man apparently and all the rest of it. When we when we got together in conversation, I noticed that this man's language language was the same language that I used to use before I got saved. And he used to use swear words, like they were gospel words. And I used to rebuke him all the time. I used to say to him, oh man, stop that. Oh, for goodness sake, rise up. He used to laugh it off. And I watched this man for years. Going on like this, you are all wondering who it is. You'll never know. That man backslid. I'm going to say this if he ever front slid. But he done it in such a way that he gave the enemies of Christ occasion to blaspheme. I'm going to say this. I don't know if that man was ever born again or not. No change. And yet I could take you to other men and women. And from the day and hour that Jesus Christ came into their lives. And I'm talking about men and women from backgrounds of alcohol and drugs Thieving, adultery, dirty mouths, and today, the only way I can put this, Jesus Christ has made them beautiful. There's a difference about them. Full of love. Full of forgiveness. Full of mercy. Full of grace. And they're wonderful Christians to be around. That's the kind of Christian you want to be around. And I'm going to say this. If you're around somebody and they're saying that they're Christians. And... They curse, they swear. Get away from them. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. There is a sound. Jesus says, Thou hearest the sound thereof. When a man receives the Spirit of God, they sound differently. Let me give you a couple of scriptures. I don't know if I'm going to get this finished or not. Psalm 40. Verse 3. Watch this sound. He has put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. Many shall see it in fear and shall trust the Lord. What does that mean, Pastor? Because of your song, many can be converted. Because of the new song that he has put in your mouth. You sound so differently. The Holy Spirit. Have you ever woke up in the morning and there's a song in your head? A song in your heart. You could be standing in the shower. And you could have been in the shower five minutes before you realize you've been singing it for the past five minutes. Praise is on to God. Jesus, just the mention of your name. Flowers grow, the desert blooms again. Jesus, just the mention of your name. He has put a new song in our mouths. 
even praise unto our God. And many shall see it in fear and shall trust the Lord. There is a sound like the sound in the day of Pentecost. Acts chapter 2 says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. As of a rushing, here we go, mighty wind. Ah, oh, come on. As of a as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. All the house, not part of it, all the house. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat on each of them, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Watch this, here's the new song. And began to speak with other tongues. Hallelujah. Here's this new sound. Came as a sound from heaven. They spoke with other tongues. When a man gets filled with the wind of the Holy Ghost, there's a new sound. Verse 6 says, Every man heard them speak a new language. Point 3 is a close. The wind represents something else. I hope I've time to get this. The wind represents something else. Are you ready for this? It represents power. Jesus said you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Do you remember? Listen to what Ephesians 3 and 20 says. Now on to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Watch this. According to the power. According to the power that worketh in us. According to this scripture, God has given us the power to achieve through him above and beyond our wildest dreams. What's your dream? Are you dreaming too small? Are you hoping too small? Have you a dream, Pastor? Yep. That's a massive dream. One that will glorify Jesus Christ. Not just to an individual, but the whole country. That's my dream. Revival. My dream is to see revival come to the whole of Ireland. For hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people to be swept into his, his kingdom being born again of his spirit. Don't minimize God. He's bigger than you know. According to the power it says that is already in us. The power is already in us. We have just got to switch it on. I walked into the office over in the church a, a while ago and one of my sons was sitting and he was on the computer and he had a, a, a piece of paper in his hand. He was looking at the computer and then he was looking at the piece of paper and then he went down like this and I seen he was struggling and I just went over to the wall and I hit the switch and the lights come on and he went from that he says, oh thank you, I can see. <laughs> I was blind and now I see. Simple switch. The power was there for what he needed. The power is there for what you need, my friend. But you've got to turn that switch on. You've got to turn it on. Over the last lot of years, as I close, we have witnessed the devastating effects of the power of 
Hurricane Harvey, Hurricane Irma, Hurricane Katrina, just to mention a few. As they rip through whole villages and towns and, and leaving behind total destruction. I remember sitting, sometimes you watch these things on television and you don't, you don't, you think you're watching a movie and yet you're watching cars flying through the air. You're watching houses being totally ripped off, uh, apart. You're watching, you know, sides of, uh, of mountains falling down into the sea. You're, you're watching boats landing on the top of people's houses. You're watching total devastation. The power that's within those uh, hurricanes, they can be so devastating. Natural wind is a powerful force. Natural wind is a powerful force. But handled correctly, it can help generate. You ready for this? There's a lesson there, and I haven't time. Because some people have taken the power of God. And they've used it and people have been hurt they've misused it should I say misused what God has given them natural wind is a powerful force but handled cor correctly it can help generate you ready for this electricity electricity for hospitals for schools, for homes. Use right. This power that Almighty God has given us can be used to help so many people, brothers and sisters. What are you doing with the power that's within you this morning? Think about it. The same power, the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you. What are you doing with it? As I close, I want to look and to show you if I can of a time. Yeah. Briefly, turn to Mark chapter 4 with me. Mark chapter 4. I want to show you who's in charge of this wind. Who's in charge of this power. Mark chapter 4 verse 35 says, And the same day when the even was come, Jesus saith unto them, Let us pass over on to the other side. Now watch this. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. Watch this. And there arose a great storm. Here's this wind. Here's this storm. And there arose a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and said unto him, Master, curest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. Someone gave that illustration as, 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 a, as a man, uh, you know, discipline, disciplining his dog. And he tells the dog to lie down. And Jesus spoke to this wind, to this storm, and he says, peace be still. I think it's powerful. Three words, peace. Be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. For many, we have this past year 
been living what feels like the midst of the, the, the midst of a storm. I know the master. I know the master of the storm. I know the master of the wind. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm, and he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to the other, What manner of man is this? Even the wind and the sea doth obey him. As I close. Ephesians 3 and 20. Can I say something? It's just come to me. These were seasoned fishermen on this boat. And they thought they were going to perish. There's some seasoned Christians listening to me. And you're at the point where you feel like you're going to perish. I know the master of the wind. You feel it's too much for you. Let, let me close with this. I have watched over this past year in the middle of all this that has been going on. I have seen families. They have come alive in God. Like never before they have proven God this past year. In the midst of this storm. Of this COVID-19. This pandemic. I have seen individuals flourish in the midst of everything that has went on and yet I'm sorry to say that I've also seen others and they've let their heads go down they've been discouraged now I'm not talking about people who have been hurt there's people who have lost loved ones there's people who have been sick there's people I'm not talking about these people I'm talking about people who just stop trying who have given up friend you need to talk to the master the master of the wind you need to ask him to, to calm your storm and to give you peace and he will do it now on to him the master that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us on to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end hear me he does it he does it not us let go and let go Call upon the master of the wind and he'll come to you. May the Lord bless. Part three, symbols of the Holy Spirit. Why we need the Holy Ghost. Why we need, it's imperative that you have the Holy Ghost. It's imperative that you're born again. It's imperative that we are driven by the power of the Holy Spirit. May God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for listening. Stay safe. Look after one another. And keep looking to the Lord. I ask it in Jesus' precious name.